So our next speaker today, Dr. Mistry couldn't make it, so Dr. Bill Freeman will be speaking from AHRQ. He is a senior research advisor for minority health at ARC. Thanks. All right, thank you so, so much. And I'm going to share my screen, um, assuming that's uh, just kind of the standard way that I always would normally. One second, please. And um, bring up my PowerPoint. And hopefully you guys haven't been running into any of the hybrid meeting issues. Um, I was um, actually a, a big part of a, a conference recently that, that definitely had some issues there. Um, my big issues, I'm trying to find the share button. Why is it not here right now? I'm not seeing it. Um, okay, here it is. Um, Okay, here we go. All right, thank you for that slight delay. And thank you for having me here today. Is this, okay. So um, here's what I plan to cover today in the few short minutes that we have together. And I hope this isn't too much of a data dump on you all. Um, hopefully some of this is somewhat familiar, um, at least on, on the surface and we'll get a little deeper, but I'll plan to provide an overview of AHRQ, um, some of our priorities, uh, the work that we do, and then I'll talk about the basic uh, grant funding mechanisms that we support, um, and then go into some uh, actual real world examples of some trauma research that um, we have recently supported. And then we'll transition over to, uh, to something that, that really hopefully will help you all as you start to think about projects that you might want to submit applications for. And uh, these are best practices and tips and tricks we're applying to our grants. So the first um, place to start really would be the ARC mission. And um, so that is to produce evidence to make healthcare safer, higher quality, more accessible, equitable, and affordable, and to work with the US Department of Health and Human Services to make sure that evidence is understood and used. So a couple of pieces, I'm gonna break this into two. Uh, first, if you, um, you may have heard of AHRQ and think of us as a patient safety uh, research funder, which we are, uh, and we're the predominant funder of safety research um, at the federal government. However, uh, we also do so much more than that. So we also uh, support research and conduct research for quality improvement in many different settings of healthcare. Uh, we also uh, work to make healthcare more accessible, equitable, and affordable. And then the second part of this is that we, um, or towards the end there where it says the evidence is understood and used, um, this really speaks to our efforts to um, not just create the evidence, but really get it implemented in the healthcare system or systems across the United States. And so we really do have a big focus on dissemination and implementation and demonstration projects. So a bit more uh, a detail about uh, how we um, go about the work that we do. Uh, so first you can think about us as generating um, care delivery scientific uh, evidence and actionable knowledge. So ARC funds extramural research uh, and conducts our own research to understand how care is delivered and how it can be delivered better. So think along the lines of the National Academies of Medicine's uh, quality framework, which you know goes into quality and safety, equity, timeliness, care coordination, and value. Um, and, and then we move that um, evidence uh, into practice. And so we develop tools and training and resources to support uptake of and use of that evidence. And we have a major focus, like I said, on implementation science. So the actual movement into doing and the learning to actually improve care in the real world. Um, but we, we don't just stop there. Um, we also have to monitor and report feedback about changes to care delivery. And so we've um, historically, over the years, had a number of measurement programs that we've developed. So the CAPS program you may have heard of or the ARC quality indicators. Uh, we have data collection projects such as the HCUP project, MEPS, and QSRS. Uh, we conduct analytics. And then we use all of that to help support the reporting to state and federal policymaking and to inform the field uh, of where improvements um, are needed. So... Um, this, uh, another way to learn about what we do is just thinking about this conference that, and, and summit that you guys are at. Uh, so uh, across three different points. So first, the collaborative learning environment. So ARC's mission emphasizes the value of fostering 
partnerships among stakeholders and um, this this conference is just that it's a platform for multidisciplinary collaboration among trauma uh, care experts and ARC supports these kinds of environments for knowledge exchange but best practice sharing and professional development. Um, another way to look at it is uh, the promotion of evidence-based practices. So uh, ARC's uh, dedication to evidence-based practices is mirrored by the summit's um, goal of disseminating the latest research findings and best practices in trauma care. And of course, uh, the goal of the research community in developing evidence and getting it used to promote improvements in trauma care. And then lastly, um, advancing health equity and eliminating disparities. So um, since our inception, we've had a major focus on disparities and more prominently, we've shifted uh, more appropriately to, to health equity overall. Um, and so it is a major uh, priority of the, of the agency and of course of this conference as well, where the vision aligns very nicely of in trying to enhance access to quality trauma care for all patients, uh, regardless of their uh, socio-demographic factors. So now I'll move into some of our funding mechanisms that we typically use, and this will help you as you start to think about the research projects that you may have. Uh, first, I have a link up here at the top uh, that it says NOFO main page. You can go there and you'll see a listing of all of our uh, notices of funding opportunities. Um, those are what we used to call program announcements or RFAs. Um, and so uh, that's, that's sort of the current list. But um, behind each of those NOFOs, um, they rest on a particular grant mechanism. And so that's what these are. Uh, There's sort of a structure uh, behind um, uh, the, the different NOFOs. And so this is an illustration that's a, sort of a, a transition over time, both of the maturity of, of, of a given research topic, but also of the principal investigators' um, experience as well. So we begin with our 36 awards. Uh, these are dissertation awards. Um, and then you move into the K awards, which are uh, postdoctoral awards, so the KO1 and the KO8, which includes the Mentored Research Scientist and Career Development Awards. Um, and then you transition over into more of our bread and butter uh, health services research awards. These are the ones that you may initially think of when you think of health services research. So we've got our RO3s, which are our small, small research grants. Those typically last about uh, one or two years. And then we have the RO1s, which can last anywhere from three, four or five years. Um, and then we have, as I've said, we've had a we have a major emphasis on demonstration and, and dissemination and implementation grants. And so we have our R18 mechanism. And then we also have cooperative agreements, which are the U18s. Uh, continuing down across the, the sort of the timeline here, we've got, um, of course, the conferences like this one today, uh, where we support uh, both large and small conferences uh, to help disseminate, uh, set uh, research agendas, and a whole host of other things. Uh, so I, I think when I was thinking about putting this together, it, it would make more sense to kind of go through some actual um, awarded uh, projects of art to help understand really, you know, what do they look like, what kind of uh, topics do they expand, uh, look into and uh, evaluate. So um, here's an example of um, some K awards that were recently awarded in the trauma area. Um, so we have evaluate, this first one is an example um, and, and that uh, shows that it, it's evaluating long-term clinical outcomes after traumatic injury and then evaluating the impact of alternative insurance design strategies on long-term outcomes. Another example, um, this one is, the second one is working to improve the accuracy of pediatric field triage, which has been shown um, that is, its sensitivity is much lower than an adult field triage. So um, the work to try to figure out how to improve that uh, for those pediatric uh, populations. Looking over here to the RO1s, um, and so this, I'm gonna, sorry, I need to move my uh, header here. Um, the RO1s, we have an example uh, of this first one, which has a goal to use uh, patient-centric smartphone virtual reality uh, tool to determine if it can reduce pain uh, during repeated at-home burn dressing changes. And the goal here is, of course, to hopefully re uh, resulting in better pain management, lowering medication use, and improving patient, the patient experience. Uh, the second example, um, it looks to determining innovative and effective concepts and techniques for developing the next generation of health information technology supported work systems uh, so that they can provide evidence-based, integrated, seamless, safe, and patient and family-centered care for pediatric populations.
Uh, next, we have uh, those R18s. Again, these are our demonstration or dissemination and implementation grants. Uh, the first example here has a goal to develop the scientific evidence needed to bring competency-based simulation training and evaluation of surgical skills to orthopedic uh, trauma care. And then the second one has a goal to develop an evidence-based model for designing trauma rooms, which can, uh, will be done by taking a comprehensive approach to study the trauma room dynamics and how they relate to workflow interruptions, disruptions, and technology integration. So, uh, and then finally, we'll uh, round this out with some examples of some conferences in trauma that we've uh, supported recently. Uh, the first one uh, will apply best practices from dissemination and implementation science. Uh, team facilitation and adult learning theories to better understand clinical guideline needs for a more diverse set of trauma centers. And then the last one, of course, needs no more um, explanation is, is today's, uh, today's summit. So hopefully you're starting to think about um, maybe some project ideas that you've had um, over time, or, or at least you can keep this with you and, and as you move forward, do so and, and, and start to think about how it might fit under an ARC um, uh, funding mechanism. With that in mind, your next step would be to apply. And so here are some best practices for applying for ARC grants. So first, preparation is key. Um, and so the first thing you would want to do is uh, certainly brainstorm your research idea and familiarize yourself with ARC's mission and research priorities. I've already done a little bit of, of that now, uh, but really tailor your grant proposal to align with ARC's areas of interest, the strategic foci. Uh, we do have special emphasis notices, which are sort of uh, special topics that we highlight as high priorities for the agency, and it may align with some of the topics that you're interested in conducting research in. And then you can always sign up and connect and uh, to stay informed, because although, you know, our, our mission is not going to change likely over time, some of the uh, priorities do change, especially with new um, uh, issues in the health system that come up. The second thing to do would be um, to determine which funding mechanism aligns best with your project. And so uh, think about, you know, where does this project fit in terms of its scope and its focus? Again, thinking about the maturity of, of the topic itself. Is it more in the exploratory stage? Uh, is there already some evidence behind it? That'll lead you to different parts of different funding mechanisms and therefore different funding opportunities. And also consider yourself as a principal investigator where you are in your career. Uh, the third thing you can do is to search the ARC website for ARC funded grants. So uh, first of all, you want to ensure that there's no duplication of your proposed project, um, but also uh, look for synergies with other funded projects. So ARC loves to be able to tell the full picture story on, on a given topic or research area. And so if you see a project that kind of uh, can complement yours, um, by all means, uh, you know, put it forth. We, we would love to, um, to, to consider it. Um, you can also do this in a more systematic way by looking at the NIH reporter system. Uh, it does include all the ARC awards. Um, next, you can contact ARC program staff early and often. Um, I'll emphasis on the early um, for my sake, but uh, so present a, um, you can put together a one page concept paper with your research uh, specific aims. Um, and we will provide you feedback that's more customized, you know, given, you know, who you have assembled as your team, what, given specific topic you're looking into and that sort of thing. Um, and then uh, probably, again, most importantly, prepare your proposal early, well before the deadline. So give yourself at least six months to get it all together. Um, so there are standard um, receipt dates for applications for our standing applications. Um, and those are uh, three times per year. And that's posted, uh, I think that's where this link would take you to. Um, but if you are applying to sort of a uh, RFA that's uh, more unique, it might have non-standard dates. And so just check within the text of that announcement for those particular dates. Okay, and so as you are um, thinking about putting together your investigator team, then here's a few um, tips to help you out. Uh, first, remember that your team's effort and expertise should be linked to your approach. Uh, the reviewers and the study section will um, be keenly aware that you need to have the right people around you if you're going to be able to accomplish your aims. And so you want to make sure that you can um, you, you have the right people there and it ties right in with your approach. Uh, but also be sure to clearly highlight the relevant work that they've had in their bio sketches. So if you have uh, a biostatistician uh, that's going to be conducting some fancy uh, biostatistical analyses, you need to make sure that there's evidence in, um, in her or his biosketch that really ties to and shows that they can they can accomplish that. 
And then this one also really kind of ties to the same idea, which is avoid the TBD team members if at all possible. So uh, again, as the section reviewers go through your application to score it, um, if they see TBD on one or, or more of your team members, they're not able to judge whether or not you're able to assemble the right people together. And so you need to um, uh, try to avoid that if at all possible so that they can, um, so you can score uh, as high as possible. And then lastly, uh, new investigators should be paired with experienced researchers or they should be applying for career or training grants. Uh, of course, we have many more resources on our website. Uh, so you can please visit it to learn more about the application process, more uh, application tips and information uh, about grant opportunities. Again, we call these NOFOs. And we're trying to be standard across the federal government moving forward. Uh, and so again, those are notices of funding opportunities. Um, and you can scan the QR code or more likely um, follow this link once you get our slides. Um, again, um, get connected and stay informed with ARC. Um, you know, you can sign up with ARC uh, through, the, through our email update systems. Um, it's, you can click a little button that says email in the upper right of each ARC webpage, uh, and you can do that. You can sign up for Gov Delivery bulletins on content and specific topic areas. Um, you can sign up uh, to stay alert about, again, new uh, NOFOs. Uh, you can connect with us uh, on social media, so on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. We do have a LinkedIn page uh, for the director as well as the company page. And then um, importantly, um, we have a, a page that links you over to program staff who have different subject matter expertise that might align directly with what it is you're, you're interested in researching or what project idea you have, whether it's in patient safety or minority health or women's health. Um, so you can find that by following that link there. Um, other than that, let's see, let's connect. Um, so especially if you have a project that um, is kind of couched in health equity or uh, minority health. Um, I'm the person you should reach out to. Here's my contact information. Um, you can also just reach out to me and I can direct you to the right people if you do have um, a topic that's in a more specific area. Um, other than that, thank you and I appreciate your time today.